Um, okay, so yeah, I will be talking about neurointerventions and authenticity. Um, and I would like to start with a uh, quote. So in this account, um, this is a, from a book by Helmut Dupiel. He describes his experiences with uh, deep brain stimulation in that book. And deep, deep brain stimulation is a, um, is a uh, implant in the brain, it's a wire um, that is uh, causing an electrical stimulation in a targeted brain area. Um, and uh, Helmut Dubiel has received this deep brain stimulation, <coughs> excuse me, um, to treat his depression, uh, to treat his Parkinson's disease, but as a side effect, he developed the depression. And in this account, he describes um, what happened when they uh, readjusted the settings. So he says, um, within one second, a small change in the voltage and a simple polarity reversal um, of the electrodes in my head improves the massive depression I had been experiencing for a year. I was both fascinated and frightened that the depression fell away from me just like that, as if an iron band around my soul had snapped. The very ease of the process intrigued me. The press of a button confirmed through a barely audible digital beep and supported by a tiny LED and my overcast skies instantly cleared. The friends I called thought I had just fallen in love. That's how happy I must have sounded. Frightening and also somehow humiliating was the banality of the process. I had felt the weight of the world in the innumerable sorrowful tales that had gone through my head in that year. Simply to wipe it all away at the push of a button seemed almost frivolous. Um, so in accounts like this one, um, we may be wondering like, what does it mean to be authentic? What, what does it mean to be you if we can change ourselves that drastically? Um, just by intervening in the brain on this very like, physical level. Um, and this, of course, not only, this question, of course, not only pops up in the context of um, such a neuro implant, um, but also, for instance, with uh, psychopharmaceuticals. So am I um, authentic if I change myself through um, an antidepressant or Ritalin? And the first... Um, Thing, the first question we want to address in, in, um, in answering this question is what do we mean by authenticity? And authenticity is a very um, complex uh, concept that has been influenced by very different uh, traditions th throughout history. And generally it is understood as a um, spectrum between on the one hand um, authenticity as self-discovery and on the other hand authenticity as self-creation. So um, uh, an understanding of authenticity as self-discovery means that uh, to be authentic, you should find your essence, you should find your true self and live according to it. Um, this can be done, for instance, through introspection or by listening to your emotions. Um, and in this account, the true self is understood as something like a fixed individual essence, um, which is mostly unchanging throughout one's life. And this idea um, has its origins in the work of uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau in, in modernity in the 18th century um, and the romantics after him. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have authenticity as self-creation. So according to this view, um, to be authentic, one should freely create oneself uh, independently of social norms and pressures or demands of alleged essences. So they actually deny that we have such a thing as this fixed true self. Instead, we have to create who we want to be um, freely and, and without external influences. And this idea has its origins in the work of, uh, for instance, Jean-Paul Sartre and um, the existentialists are most uh, known for this. And um, in this stark form, um, both views of authenticity seem quite implausible and they are barely held in this, in this version anymore because they make some um, empirically and metaphysically problematic assumptions. 
So if we look at um, psychology and um, neuroscience, it seems that the idea of having this fixed inner essence that's unchanging um, cannot be supported. And also the idea that we are radically free in changing ourselves seems implausible because we do have some boundaries in, in who we can be. Um, so what's, what's been happening now in, in the debate in neuroethics, for instance, um, is that there has been this recognition that on the one hand, there are boundaries of who you can be, but they also leave room for self-creation and authenticity should be um, guiding between those conditions and, and constraints. And there have been um, very attempt, various attempts to try to define authenticity as combining those two elements. Um, and such approaches to authenticity seem much more plausible and much more um, suitable to reflect um, human psychology and the uh, complexity of human psycho psychology. So in this sense, authenticity is yeah, this guiding principle between the two. And it is a multi-dimensional concept. So there are um, different, different ideas that are um, put together under this umbrella term of authenticity. And I want to talk about three such um, central concepts and ideas. Um, the first one is coherence. The second one is independence and influence. And lastly, endorsement. So authenticity can um, be understood as a matter of coherence and coherence can, we can understand coherence in two different ways. The first is synchronic coherence. And with synchronic, we mean that we look at a um, state at a particular point in time. So in this case, um, we consider the dispositions, traits, values, beliefs, and other characteristics of a person at a particular point in time. And to be authentic, they have to make sense in light of each other. They have to be mutually compatible. So for instance, um, if a person is uh, very aggressive and mean at work, but then they come home and they're very um, kind and uh, caring, um, this would not be a, a synchronically coherent character um, because in this, in this state they are, I mean, I'm saying like, okay, they're going from, from work to home, but in a, in a short, in a specific um, time period, and they display um, not, not coherent characteristics. So it's unclear whether they really value kindness um, if they don't display it at work, for instance. And according to this view, um, we should create this kind of coherent self, and we should also preserve the coherent elements of the self. So if a neurointervention would, for instance, um, threaten an element of the self, of the, the coherent set of characteristics of the self, um, it might lead to, to uh, a loss of authenticity. So new interventions can disrupt the authenticity, but they can also reinstate coherence. So for instance, if you really value activity and you, for example, you love boxing, um, but because of a mental disorder, you become very lethargic and you may feel alienated and not like yourself because you cannot follow through on what you value and what you would like to do. Um, and in such a case, a neuro intervention, which may help you overcome your depression and overcome the lethargy that's stopping you from pursuing your, um, your dispositions and what we value, um, it could make you more authentic and thereby by increasing this coherence. The second notion of coherence um, I want to mention is uh, diachronic coherence. And this is not coherence um, at, a different, at a specific point in time or a specific um, yeah, time, uh, time period, but um, it is coherence across a lifetime. Um, so here the idea is that a person may have conflicting or ambivalent um, characteristics, 
but in light of their life story, it makes sense how they coexist in one individual. So a person could be um, could want to be both uh, an artist, a traveling artist, and a settled accountant. Um, but if we look at the story of that person's life, it makes sense how they end up wanting both. So there is a coherence to their character um, based on their life story. And in cases, in, in this understanding of authenticity, a neurointervention that leads to very abrupt changes and could disrupt this kind of um, diachronic coherence. So this would be like the example of Helm Dubiel, um, we heard in the beginning, that um, if you have this very abrupt change from one um, mindset to another, as in his example, um, it might be difficult to uphold this coherence of one's life story. You might feel like this doesn't really connect to who you have been before. And this can lead to a, a sense of alienation and disrupted, um, yeah, disrupted coherence and loss of authenticity. The next um, central idea of authenticity I'd like to discuss is an idea of independence and influence. So the basic idea here is that authentic changes um, of the self and um, an authentic way through life means that um, what we do and who we are should not originate um, in external causes. So we should create ourselves individually and uh, independently. And for instance, a person that is just following the newest trends or is just doing what everyone does um, is not authentic in that account. And this idea has historically um, been, can be found both in, um, in accounts of authenticity as self-creation and authenticity as self-discovery. So um, authenticity as self-discovery, as it has been, um, for instance, introduced by um, Rousseau, he argues that we have this, this essence that we have, this um, true self is the natural self. And society exerts a corrupting influence on the self. Um, so we should protect, especially children, from these um, corrupting influences. Um, and he also wrote in books about pedagogy on how we should um, raise children to make sure that they remain um, independent and can uh, bring their um, natural true self uh, to flourishing and also accounts of authenticity and self-discovery stress this notion of independence for instance um, Heidegger argues that we should not follow um, thus man or the they we shouldn't just do what one does um, to be authentic and similarly Sartre stressed how we shouldn't um, how we shouldn't just follow social scripts in uh, throughout our lives, because um, that would be also an instance of inauthenticity. And in the last, um, I'd say in the last decade or two, there is an increasing recognition um, of the role others play in um, defining ourselves and in being authentic. Um, so for instance, it has been argued that um, to do, to to distinguish between what is meaningful and what is trivial about a person, um, we need to refer to shared um, notions of, of meaning. So I cannot decide that the number of hair on my head is very meaningfully and finding myself and is an, uh, an important trait of my authentic self. Um, instead, I have to refer to shared notions of meaning um, to, to define myself and to be, to be, to create an authentic self. Um, and then there's of course also the role of others in, in yeah, understanding who we are and in, um, in creating ourselves. So others uh, reflect who we are, we talk to others um, who we think we, we are, um, and this is also shaping ourselves. We define ourselves um, in terms of relations to others. Um, and to groups. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of room for influence of 
of others on our identity. And adopting our identity, that's another argument that's been made, um, can also depend on the recognition of others. So a person that says that um, she is white, but no one else uh, recognizes um, this person as white in, in some sense fails to adopt that as part of her identity. Um, and in that say, sense might also fail to adopt it as part of her authentic self. So um, others do play a very central, central role in defining ourselves. Um, but for authenticity, some strong forms of conformism and strong external influences, for instance, just straightforward manipulation, um, are still considered as inauthentic. So in the example of neuro interventions, so if a neuro intervention is pursued for the wrong reasons, um, it diminishes authenticity. So if I just use um, a neuro intervention because my boss told me to, um, or because everyone else does it, if I use Ritalin to study because everyone does it, um, this would be um, considered inauthentic according to that view. And then the third idea I want to discuss is um, endorsement. So authenticity as something like as um, identification with your, with your characteristics and your actions. Um, so according to this view, an authentic action or desire or other characteristics, traits and so on, um, are the ones that we identify with or rationally endorse. So in this view, um, reason is considered as um, the superior principle in defining itself. So this is like compared to other characteristics such as our inclinations or emotions, which are seen as less defining for the self in this account. Because through reason, we can assess other aspects of the self from a third person view. So we can look at our um, emotions, let's say, and consider whether um, we endorse them, whether we identify with them or not. So through reason um, and identif identification, um, this can reveal who we truly are, while other uh, features of the self, such as uh, emotions, skills, desires, or habits, um, they can be overruled or ignored based on the rational choices um, because they are considered as less self-revealing than reason. So, for example, um, if we have two women and they are both uh, smoking, and for one of them, this is something she really identifies with, this expresses her contrarian views or something. Um, and for the other woman, her smoking is really just a nasty habit and she would wish she could get rid of it. Um, then according to such an account of authenticity as endorsement and identification, the smoking is only really part of the um, authentic self of the first uh, woman that identifies with it. Um, and in this case, for instance, using intervention to overcome smoking um, would not threaten the authenticity of the person that actually wants to quit smoking um, because she didn't identify with it in the first place. So in this account, as long as a new intervention and the change it brings about is rationally endorsed, it is authentic. And the same is um, like beyond um, ideas like, like smoking also with more fundamental characteristics. If a person that is becoming much more outgoing after um, having treated their depression, um, if that person actually identifies with this um, change, um, he or she would be authentic in, in this case. Okay, and now just to briefly sum up um, what I've talked about. So the idea is that authenticity is this multidimensional concept. Um, I have talked about coherence, independence and influence and endorsement as central components of authenticity. There are others which I have not mentioned. For instance, um, authenticity as truthfulness is also a quite common um, understanding. So this would be the idea that to be authentic, you have to um, honestly uh, and freely express your thoughts or, or emotions. And that is another 
um, Mew haven't really mentioned now, but we can pick it up in the discussion if you like. Um, and neuro interventions can foster and threaten authenticity with respect, with respect to all of those dimensions. Um, and it really depends on the specific case and specific um, yeah, situation on what the impact on authenticity is. And this is it from my short introduction. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to your question and the discussion.